everybody. I'm Sweet Baby Jay, the Artistic Director for the Palm Springs Women's Jazz Festival. Thank you so much for joining us for this special Juneteenth celebration. Oh, June 19th, 1865, baby, marked the end of slavery. Amazing. When you consider today, we are in the midst of a pandemic. We are rioting in the streets and people across the world, the whole globe of different backgrounds and ethnicities are standing up for Black Lives Matter and protesting against racism. So it is us against the racist. The whole world has said enough is enough. And I think we should mark this momentous day with music. It's a Friday afternoon because you know music has really marked every major event in our lives when you think about it. You can probably remember the song that was playing for your first kiss or your first dance or maybe even your first protest. Well, let me tell you, I put a special show together for you, The History of Women in Music, which does just that. It marks the events in our lives that propelled us forward. Women who made a difference, who spoke up and said, hello, baby, I've got something to say, and this is marking this event. So let's just do that. But first, Let's check in and see how you're feeling because I've got a guitar diva in the house that's going to knock you out as long as you allow it. <laughs> Mimi Fox, baby. Mimi Fox. Girl, what you doing? I'm going to white man or even a white woman to put on it because it sounded too tinny with their voices. 
They need to go and get a big old black bottom woman, baby. Let me put on my 1920s gear. Oh, yes. So they went searching for revival tent shows where those women, honey, had big bottoms and they could sing that song. And even they sounded high on the phonograph. Oh, yeah, baby, I got to come from behind the piano. Come on, y'all, and tell you about what happened in the 1920s. You know they were looking for a big old black bottom singer. You know the women with those big old bottoms, baby. And they went and found one in Bessie Smith. Let me tell you about it. Bessie Rainey laid down the blues. Bessie Smith and my Rainey, baby, played significant roles in American music, setting the backdrop to our lives. And I am thrilled and delighted to be able to bring this special concert from our homes into yours. 
Oh, and a special thank you to Karen Hammock and Mimi Fox, baby, two of the fiercest musicians on the scene today. And thank you for your support of women in music by showing your love and appreciation and filling up the virtual tip jar. Just click right on the link to keep the live music flowing. Now let's get back to these divas. One of the greatest influences on me was Bessie Schmidt. I listened to everything she did. But you know, people didn't want to hear the blues anymore. Mm -mm, I had to add a little something, something to it. Oh, my name is Eleanor Fagan, and my story goes something like this. Mom and Pop were just a couple of kids when they got married. He was 18, she was 16, and I was three. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Billie Holiday is an iconic singer, baby. One of the greatest, and she was actually a civil rights propeller, let's say, because her song, Strange Fruit, which talked about the murders that were going on down south, was banned on the radio. She played in a little club called Cafe Society, and people came from miles around to see exactly what she was singing about. Southern Breeze by strange fruit, blood on the leaves, blood at the root, black body swaying in a southern breeze, strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. Strange fruit threw Billie Holiday into the national limelight. She was now singing in front of white audiences, getting national exposure. But it was a little too much for Diva. Because what she didn't expect is what happened when she played down south. She couldn't use the bathroom in the club that she was performing in. She couldn't stay in the hotel. She couldn't even eat in the backstage. She had to go outside. Billie Holiday was one of the most influential singers of the 20th century. To this day, they are still sampling her music. Mm. Let's do a special arrangement to Billie Holiday. Karen is laying it down, baby. And I want to say how iconic this singer is because she lives on these ages. Good morning, honey. You old gloomy shy. Good morning, honey. Thought we said goodbye last night. I tossed and turned until it seemed you gone. But here you are with the dawn. Wish I'd forget you, you're here to stay. Seems I met you when my love went away. Now every day I start by saying to you, good morning, honey, what's new? Stop hunting me, love. Shake you know how Just leave me alone I got those Monday blues Straight blue Sunday blues Good morning honey Here we go again Good morning honey You're the one Billy Holiday was one of the most iconic singers in the world. She spans 
all the way up to today, baby. They're still sampling her music. Hence, this tribute. Stop haunting me, love. Can't shake you know how. Just leave me alone. I've got those Monday blues. Straight through Sunday blues. Good morning, honey. Here we go again. Good morning, honey. You're the one who blew me away. Might as well get used to you and your love. Good morning, honey. Sit down. Ooh. Sit down. Shooting data. So I'm going to play. leader in her own right, baby. The blues goes to war in the 1940s, World War II, and the era of the big bands swinging hard, baby. Band leaders like Fletcher Henderson, Chick Webb, Count Basie, Glenn Miller, and Benny Goodman headed off to war. And while they were away, the female players filled their shoes at home. Josephine Baker was a spy. Woo! Stop it, girl. <laughs> big bands, including the pair of you co-eds with Clara Bryant, Ivy Benson's big band, Ina Ray Hutton's, and the International Sweethearts of Rhythm. <laughs> would take me anywhere do you want to jump children do you want to jump children yeah. 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 jump 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 jump
talking about, baby. The 1940s were over. And let me tell you, the 50s had rolled around. And that was a different time. Blues had taken a different trajectory. Because those guys that came back from the war, they wanted something different. The black guys had been overseas and been treated like human beings, like men. But they come home to America and were called boys again and asked to step out of the sidewalk while someone walked by. Mm -mm, that didn't work for them. So blues took that trajectory of bebop, that rebelliousness. Oh yeah, baby. Miles Davis and Thelonious Monk and Charlie Parker, they were all doing their thing. Carmen McRae, mm, bebop was happening in the 50s. And on this side, the youth that came back from the war, they were also rebellious. Elvis Presley, he looked at what Chuck Berry was doing and he said, oh, I love me some of that rock and roll. So blues took that rock and roll angle, baby. And while that was happening, while they were rolling on the ground fighting over the rock and roll, Sister Rosetta Tharp said, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Step right on top of them and said, baby, I am the queen of rock and roll. So I want to right now check in with the queen of blues and jazz and rock and all manner of guitar, baby. The master Mimi Fox is at home. How are you doing, Mimi? Yeah, hi, everyone. Hi, Jay. I'm doing pretty good. I sure miss playing live and I can't wait to play with you and for great audiences again. Uh, meanwhile, this is my original piece, Getaway Blues, which really is a tribute in a way to Sister Rosetta because it's got some of the early boogie woogie and, and blues and rock feel that she was such a, such a master of. So here we go.
talking about. A toast to you. I hope you have your cocktail in hand. Mimi, oh, what a wonderful song. Thank you so much. And Sister Rosetta was a bad mama jamma just like you, mama. <laughs> oh my goodness, everybody. I don't know if you know this about me, but I am an unlicensed psychotherapist. And I give all of my friends therapy for free and I want to provide a prescription to you. And it is a prescription for the blues, baby. Music soothes the savage beast, and you best believe that we are providing that for you from our homes to yours. This is a special concert, and I hope you are enjoying it as much as I am. Oh my goodness, thank you again for your support and your generosity for filling up the virtual tip jar because without you, we could not make this possible. I miss playing live, just like Mimi said, honey, but we are bringing a concert from our homes right into yours, baby. So sit back and enjoy because I have to go get my gear on because the 1950s are here, dog. <laughs> Woo. Yes. Mm. 1950s. That was a special time in America, baby, because the soldiers had come home and they wanted to come home to an America that they had fought hard for. This American dream, the one that was on the cover of magazines. So Rosie the Riveter had to step back from the factories. She had to take off her overalls, her bandana, and go back into the kitchen. The band leaders had to step off the stage and give the jobs back to the soldiers. It was the right thing to do. One of the most requested songs of the era, and Dinah Washington one of the most popular songs. What a difference a day made. Twenty-four hours. From the sun and the flowers Oh, there used to be rain My yesterdays were blue deep Today I'm a part of you
and the difference. Mavis Staples was one of the most important voices of the 1960s. That was a turbulent time for our country, similar to now. And we needed a song of protest to lift us up. And we got it, baby, with that Afro-wearing, deep voice, Mavis Staples. Oh, power to the people. In the middle of the 20th century, oppression and racism were challenged by courage. We're willing to be beaten for democracy. Leadership. Negroes want complete politics, social, economic, and political. And a dream. We as a people will get to the promised land. A crusade that galvanized a people. It unfolded in the courts and exploded on the streets. The demand for freedom and equality promised to unite the nation and threaten to tear it apart. It was the long, dramatic struggle of the Civil Rights Movement. officers that he could not breathe after an officer knelt on his neck. The family of George Floyd held a memorial in his memory.
changing the world. each other and let's get it right man today is the day we're gonna stand up for our community man if we could do this we could do more we just gotta continue on pushing and don't give up Now let's take a look at what's happening in the 70s. The 1970s, baby. Blues and jazz took a different turn. Still, funk came into the picture. You had Herbie Hancock and Chaka Khan funking it up because jazz was like, wait a minute, we can bam, pop lock it. Well, let me tell you, one of the funkiest divas in the world is my very good friend, my co-writing friend, and all sorts of things, a master musician laying down some arrangements. And what was she doing in the 1970s? Let's go to Karen's house and find out. So when I was younger and in the 70s, uh, you know, I grew up um, kind of rock and roll in the blues and uh, had been listening to like Tower of Power and um, uh, Stevie Wonder. Um, and uh, then all of a sudden Herbie Hancock comes in with this amazing funk that brings the element of this modern jazz, but it's funky and it changed everything. Fabulous. And uh, we were all influenced by him. And uh, here we go. So you can take something like Summertime and add that element. It's really fun. To every Kansas City woman with her hand on her hip and a bend and her slip, sliding on down, looking for some muddy waters, but finding Big Joe Turner instead, I say, look no further, baby. Karen Hammock is on the keys, funking it up. All right, gonna play a little bit here.
here we go. Also, just quickly, while we're still playing, the whole idea was to keep a groove, keep a groove with all the sophisticated chords, but just keep a pulse, which was different. Uh, something that everyone could really feel, anybody love that. Yeah, and just want to say really quickly that, uh, like, Stevie Wonder, um, incredible. So he, he brought in all the beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautiful voicings, everything that he had from Motown. But he, he was a game changer in terms of the roads and, and, and how you're going to voice. Donny Hathaway, people who are uh, usually uh, talked about as singers, but Donny Hathaway, great piano player. Um, I have to say, one of my idol piano players was Aretha Franklin. Um, and, and I have to say, Roberta Flack um, is really one of my most favorite piano players. And this is a little bit different um, vibe, but... Uh, she she did some stuff with Donny Hathaway and her playing is so is so pure and simple and beautiful and like a prayer and uh so on the other end of the spectrum you have Herbie and and and, and all these cats with this beautiful kind of um involved kind of changes uh even Miles was getting into that within a silent way so there was this real kind of thing but then at the same time you had people like Aretha and and Roberta Flack who were playing just from that gospel that sort of Americana gospel which uh is probably one of the biggest influences for me um and uh, who else yeah just especially from that period um trying to think yeah everybody had just uh, I got different things from different people um fabulous yeah love all this love all this music thanks Jay thanks for having me clack 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 mm. this is what I'm talking about funk baby summertime you don't know what you're gonna get when you get us classic and standardize it and wake it up wake it up absolutely wonderful funking it up in the 70s and so what happened to jazz and blues in the 80s when it was the era of the disco well it went to college jazz goes to college and the college kids started professoring it up right but don't count out the players who were 
in the clubs and on the scene doing their thing. As a matter of fact, let's check back in with Mimi and see what she was doing in the 1980s. In the 80s, I was playing with a funk band and I was also living in Oakland, California. So I was exposed to so much great music, a lot of funk, a lot of great hip hop. And um, through the years, I've retained my love for that great music and I like to mix and match. And so I got this version of Willow Weep For Me that kind of fuses all the different styles of music that I love. Um, and uh, it's my tribute to Billie Holiday because uh, she was the first person I heard record this great song by Anne Ronell. Here we go, Willow Weep For Me. <laughs>
you up in this joint. Willow, weep for me. Oh, <laughs> well, there you have it. A taste of the history of women in blues. I hope you leave here today with a little more understanding of the roles that these iconic divas played in our lives. And a special thank you to two of the most prolific players on the planet, Karen Hammett and Meet Me Fox. Stop it, don't hurt nobody. <laughs> I miss playing with you divas, but we did get to play together. And this was a special concert and we got to do it for you out in the world, honey. Thank you so much for your support of women in music. We couldn't do what we do without you. So let me tell you this. Woo, what can I say? We have been fighting this battle for a long time. And freedom, honey, you can taste it, you can feel it. I wonder what it's like not to be me. I wonder what it's like to be free. Thank you for standing with us on this journey. This is why this is a special Juneteenth celebration because we stand together against all of those isms that are happening around us. It is important that we all stand together and use our voices to empower and uplift. We will get through this together, okay? More power to the people, baby. More power to the people. And we'll be back, yeah. Thank you.